Hey folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben U here for another direct to YouTube special. This one funded by Felchmaster, who has donated to see the Basuda Red deck in action. So Basuda is a Japanese player who is, has been having absolute awesome success with these various Red Prison Moon Stompy decks, whatever exactly you want to call them. Um, over, uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe the last three or four months now, maybe longer. So one of the things they did was sort of standardize Fireflux Squad as a card in this deck. So when this thing attacks, you can exile another attacking creature you control. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card, and you put that card onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. So the idea here is that you get a goblin token off one of these things, or maybe a thopter token off of P and K, and then you attack with the Fireflux Squad. And then your Fireflux squad turns into, instead of a token, another must-answer card. Um, and the idea is that you are a hyper-aggressive version of this decklist, and the Fireflux squad, as a hasty threat, kind of fills a role similar to, say, Reality Smasher in Eldrazi. So the thing I find interesting about this decklist is the sideboard, actually. Now. There are two Leyline of the Voids here. And so if you look at the plan to fight an Uro, the plan is not attack the graveyard. It is get them dead before they can escape that card, um, which is a pretty interesting approach. So rather than having a whole bunch of things to fight against, say, an Uro, there's just more aggressive threats. So you can say go down on chalices and trinospheres and board in a whole bunch of threats and direct damage and just look to goldfish your opponent as quickly as possible. Because this deck is just so aggressive with the fireflux squads and all of the bodies that are here, uh, note there's, there's no Karns, there's no Chandras here, you are just really looking to deal 20 as quickly as possible. Um, and this deck has a couple of spicy additions in the sideboard, such as Anji's Ravager and Hanawar Garrison, although we won't be fusing it to create a 7-4 Trampler. A 2-3 that creates two more bodies is good enough for us. Um, this deck has been having a lot of results online. Let's see how it does in this league. If you've been enjoying my legacy content, please consider throwing me a like real quick before we get started. That sort of thing really helps out with the analytics and helps get more eyes on these videos. Let's battle. All right, I'll be keeping my opening hand. I'm on the draw here. Um, how I play out this hand is going to be really dependent on what my opponent does. Oh. Well, a Chalice of the Void on the draw. Um, not great here. Um, honestly, my hand just not great versus goblins. Yeah, uh, this is a bit unfortunate. All right, what is what is my plan to win now? Because my opponent could just dump in something. That shit crazy like a Muxus next turn. I think my plan needs to be cast Shatter Skull Smashing for a large number and wipe my opponent's board and then get aggressive after that. So I think I'm just going to go Mountain Pass rather than like tapped Shatter Skull Smashing. Um, and I just really need to hope that my opponent doesn't have the nuts here. Because if they do, I am not beating it. All right, damage report, Captain. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Him. I think I feel comfortable conceding to that. All right, GG. That's the that's fine. Okay. This is a board wipe. These are removal spells. Dallas's and Trenospheres as a whole are not good. 
And if I can get Blood Moons out too, that would be nice. Well, Blood Moons technically shut off the black mana, but eh. These are just bodies. It's 59. Assuming I think Magus is acceptable, which I think I do. It's a 2-2 at the end of the day. Uh, do I want to play one Sorceress Spyglass? Do I want to play two Sorceress Spyglasses? I think I'll just play one to round out the 75. Stopping Aether Vial is cool and all, but I'm looking to kill my opponent via aggression. This hand does not have any acceleration. I don't think it's acceptable. This hand plays War Boss into War Boss. I'll keep this. I think I'm going to junk this. The, the second 4-drop is probably bad. Either because I have the ability to cast one 4-drop easily, or because I Magus of the Moon and turn the City of Traitors into a mountain to protect my own mana base. So... I'm not sure what we're waiting on here. All right, Mountain Go. We'll see which one of us is the better Goblins deck. It'll be their deck if they have a removal spell. But it'll be my deck if they don't. Oh, buddy. That is aggression. Just dictionary entry. You look it up and triple Legion War Boss is what's there. So black land into uh Goblin not Goblin Sharpshooter. Munitions expert would be a big thing that just really ruins me here. Um, I guess Tarfire could also do it, although that's not commonly played currently, I believe. This long of a pause probably bodes well for me. Never mind. All right, uh, let's just see if we get Muxus again on uh, turn two. <clears throat> All right, that's that's not the end of the world. That's very beatable. If one of my goblins has to attack each turn of able, it makes more sense to attack with both, and then I guarantee get one damage in instead of zero. A little awkward to play out my Legion War boss when Fiery Confluence is one of the best possible things that I can do. I guess that's fine. Uh, it doesn't feel good. Oh, my opponent drew Moxus. All right. Uh, I don't draw a red land. Life is pretty much over. So I can't kill Moxus, which is a problem. I guess I'm board wiping and I try to figure out the rest later.
Let's deal two damage to each creature, two damage to each opponent. And then I'll need to like... Oh, interesting. It does not say what modes Fiery Confluence is doing. So my opponent had to ask me. <sighs> yeah, this is gross. So my opponent sacrifices their creatures using Skirt Prospector to untap this. Sorry, I got a phone call there for a second. Um, so my opponent just finished sacking their board to Skirk Prospector, putting me to 11. I think the Muxus is going to finish me off. Uh, in short order. But we'll try. Yeah, so now I'm just dead if I don't draw a land. And even if I do draw a land, I'm in chump block Muxus mode. And I don't think I get out of this. I guess we can pretend for a minute that I can get out of this. Like, I can spike another land, play P and K. P and K can... Uh, effectively chump block both of those for a turn. Oh, pyrokinesis, yeah. GG opponent. Alright, opponent's name is Nightmare Moon. I will show them what a Nightmare Moon looks like. I don't really love Shatter Skull Smashing, but this is what it's good at doing. I don't have a threat, but hopefully our opponent uh, is not good against Blood Moon. Ooh. Okay, so we might be playing against a Storm deck. Could be Storm, could be Doomsday. Uh, could technically be something like a Show and Tell as well. Love these new Ponders. Alright, um... I think I more or less like the game one deck configuration. I think the Magus of the Moons are fine. I think P and K is probably the worst card here. Um, maybe we can adjust down some other cards. And just get some more aggressive stuff in there. Like I can play another Magus. Play Hanawar Garrison. Andre's Ravager has three power, right? I think I'm good with Anji's Ravager. That gets me back to 60. I think I like that. Okay, last game our opponent folded to a fast Blood Moon. And the same may be true again. I would like a hand that's a little bit faster than this if possible. Or a hand that either has Trinisphere or Chalice when I'm on the draw. I think I'm going to mulligan this, despite the fact that this hand is totally fine. This hand is aggressive as fuck. I will keep this. Um, 
Anji's Ravager is probably the card that doesn't fit. It could be Magus of the Moon. I think on six, I just accept this hyper aggressive goblin hand. Nope. Oh. <laughs> All right, our opponent is playing Doomsday. All right, my opponent has resolved their Doomsday. I'm not sure if they can win this turn. It depends on what's in their hand. Because they need a land drop and they need Thassa's Oracle. So if they already have one of those two things, life's not too bad. The rest is a whiff. There's a bunch of piles that can involve, like, Lion's Eye Diamond to get blue, or, like, a Lotus Petal to get blue through a Blood Moon effect. Uh, how, do they, how do you get blue now? Did you forget to crack an LED? That gets everything into hand. But now what? It has to be like Petal Petal Thassa's Oracle? Okay, my opponent just messed up there. GG's. Alright, um, I've been given a beat down hand that I will keep. I think Shatter Skull Smashing is the card that goes under Chrome Mox. I think I go Ancient Tomb, Chrome Mox, Imprint, Shatter Skull Smashing, play Goblin Rabble Master, and then have P and K on turn two. That can change depending on what I draw. Could imprint the spirit guide here. I'm gonna go ahead and imprint this. I don't think it's too too likely to have a use this game. Not that the spirit guide necessarily will either, but we're gonna rumble. Now I'm very likely to just play a Legion War Boss on turn two, because like every goblin card that you play just makes the previous one better or the next one better if our opponent has swords to plowshares <clears throat> they do this is very good Very happy with how this game is developing here. We've got three bodies on board. A huge portion of my opponent's deck is going to be off, and I have a P and K as follow up for later. A natural terminus or a supreme verdict would be the best things against me.
Now we just won't attack with the war boss. I don't need to throw that body out there. We'll just lose one goblin, deal my opponent two damage. Hope they don't naturally have Jete, which would be a beating. Um, that's good against me. That's very good against me. Alright, my opponent got Batter Skull, which makes me want to just fling a Thopter or a Chrome Mox at that. What? That seems insane. Is it three to activate this? Oh, it is three to activate that. Okay, that's fine. Use this as my target. I'll sacrifice this artifact. Oh, I can even do that onto the Thopter. Nice. All right, so I have two damage available to just shoot my opponent at any time. I theoretically don't even need the combat step to kill my opponent. Um, they can go like land a Jitte. And. Nope, alright. How do I want to fight my opponent's deck here? Probably not with Blood Moon. Probably not with Trinosphere. <clears throat> Chalice isn't even amazing either. I think I'm just looking to have a very aggressive draw and kill my opponent. So, this answers stuff. This is uncounterable. These are removal spells. I think I'll keep this. Go down a Magus? I think I like this on the draw. On the play, some of this stuff becomes better again. much work. All right. Um, this just plays a Rabble Master into a Rabble Master. I'm not overly excited about this, but I don't think that this uh, is worth throwing back. A 
What are you doing? Uh, that does not make a lot of sense. All right. All right, let's do the thing. I probably can't auto yield through that. So I want the Goblin Rabble Master one resolve first. And then the Fire Flux Squad one can resolve afterwards. All right. Um, Spirit Guide, not the best hit. Uh, it's kind of uh, damage neutral. All right. Well, that's fine. Like, I basically have my opponent's life total there. I think I will go ahead and uh, send the Fire Flux squad in. Like, it's so good if I flip into another Rabble Master or a PNK or something of that nature. Less good if that happens, but whatever. I am representing lethal next turn, at least theoretically. Okay. That's fine. That's very good. Now a mana source kills my opponent next turn. Actually, I don't even need the mana source. I have flyers. Yeah, 
poking for two in the air, followed by flinging one of my chrome mocks and just kills my opponent unless they swords the plowshares one of their own creatures. What if they swords the plowshares? Maybe they just swords the plowshares my PNK and then take two in the air instead. Let's see where they go. All right, my opponent tanked for a little while, and then played a Teferi. They have bounced my PNK, which, while it does something, it doesn't necessarily do the thing that they really want to be doing. Neat. Back all at them, deal them three so they can't fetch. And redeploy P and K. I don't think I need to kill the Teferi. This also just gives me another, presumably, creature, because Skyclave Apparition jumps in front of that. <clears throat> okay. Now, I don't think I play the P and K. I think I just hold up Sofer Ele Elemental. Like, I have very much lethal on board and if my opponent like plays supreme verdict or terminus i would like a flash creature oh shit 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 that doesn't work because of teferi yeah i should have just played the pnk out Yeah, that's the that's the big possible punish. Now since I didn't play P and K, I don't have lethal. Yep, forgetting about Teferi was very costly there. All right, well, that bails me out. Very happy to see that. All right, let's see if they have Force of Will or Force of Negation. Nope. I've kept a hand here that's a borderline mulligan. This has a turn two Chalice of the Void, so I am not going to throw it back. I think that's acceptable on the play. 
but this hand is going to need one more land or one more mana source in order to really pop off. Everything will be fine. I'm pretty likely to cast Blood Moon next turn over one of my threats. If you can knock a, like, oh. Yeah. What? Hmm. All right. Um, that Grizzle Brand is kind of in the way here. Not gonna lie to you. I could do a post combat Goblin Rabble Master. But if my opponent plays patiently and just like hold back Grizzle Brand, that's not good for me. So I think I'm going to Blood Moon. And then try to do this weird sword and shield thing where I let my opponent attack me for seven and then I play a shit ton of attack power and I let my opponent attack me for seven and then I play a shit ton more attack power and hope that works out for me better. Again, my opponent holding back the Grizzle Brand will be bad for me. So I'm trying to put them into the situation where they do attack with the Grizzle Brand. I assume this is just going to get Force of Willed. Yep. <clears throat> I have to do 14 to my opponent next turn, huh? Maybe 21? 14. I could also just, like, flip a PNK and, like, buy myself some time that way. That is insane to me. Okay. Um, that balance, bouncing the chalice. Probably beats me. <clears throat> Running Wish for Shared Summons also beats me. Okay. This looked very close from my side of the battlefield. I wonder how much my opponent had before they drew 7 with Grizzlebrand. Alright, um... I don't have a lot of things to board in. I think I'm going to get rid of P and Ks for something that's a bit more aggressive. So let's turn those into Unwar Garrisons, an Anji's Ravager, and another Magus when I'm on the play is probably respectable. I could, could... Sorcerer's Spyglass for Grizzlebrand or a Fetchland of some kind. I don't know that that's actually great. I think I'm looking to keep very aggressive opening hands here. Um, I think Blood Moon's fine on the play, on the draw. I think it loses most of its punch. Turn one chalice, turn two blood moon. But then I'll be on one land. I 
I don't know if this is actually good. Yeah, this hand's going to be so bad against, like, a Force of Will or something. I'm just going to mulligan this. Hand is better. Spirit Guide? Oh, let's get rid of Spirit Guide. Note here that, like, the Trinospheres and Chalices and stuff don't actually stop the show and tell. So that's why I'm totally good with keeping an aggressive opening hand. I am trying to get the opponent dead. I'm trying to kill them before they combo off rather than trying to stop their combo with this hand. We got an omniscience for our trouble. That's worth something. Probably see a ponder or a preordain here. Bottom, bottom. All right. We rumble. And actually put in Shatter Skull Smashing. Why oh, attack? I need to deal five to that Grizzle Brand in order to get through. I can only do three with a Shatter Skull Smashing right now. That's inconvenient. Uh... I think my opponent's going to attack, so I'm just going to let them have this goblin. I should have attacked with the other one as well. Like, if their pattern from last game holds true, they're going to be extremely aggressive. If my opponent, like, just sits back on a Grizzlebrand, they gain so much life. I'm hoping they don't do that. Well, it's 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 apparently working out for my opponent. Concede. Crystal veins, man. What am I supposed to do against crystal vein? All right, I'm keeping a little bit of a YOLO blood moon hand here. See if it works out. That was fast. Oh, and it goes basic planes go. Gives you gives me the middle finger. Hmm. This is potentially a mirror. In which case, I have very bad cards for the mirror currently. Not a mirror. Oh, we might be playing against lands. I am absolutely willing to uh, flip this. All right. Did a sexy little uh, dance there. Moved the Magus of the Moon from one side of the uh, the board to the other.
Bayou. Are we playing against, like, Honest to Goodness Jund? I don't really know how to sideboard if my opponent just dies here. Fuck. <clears throat> be jumped with Once Upon a Time. It could still be a land-based deck. Could be a Field of the Dead-based deck. Uh, I know I like the Blood Moon effects. I feel very confident about that. I'm going to guess that the Chalices and the Trinospheres are not going to be great against this opponent. And in the absence of knowing exactly what my opponent is doing, I think I just board in some aggressive elements. So let's board in this laser thing. Or in the Bone Crusher Giants in case my opponent um, does have some small creatures that I need to pick off. Go one Ravager, one Garrison, and then swap one P and K for one Hanwar Garrison. If we are playing against Jund, P and K is great, and if we're not, a different creature is totally fine. I mean, this just makes a Magus of the Moon on turn one. Okay. Nick Fit. Nick Fit is the answer. I think I still do this. There's a world where I'm where I can get greedier using Legion War Boss, like attack in, see if they block the token, and then do Magus of the Moon post combat, but I ADK about that. All right. Um, man, Veteran Explorer is awkward. I just accept it. I think I just accept it. So I want to board differently for the next game now. <clears throat> X damage, right? Okay, just that one target. A 
Okay, hold on. Oh, I see. I need to increment this up to four. All right, hopefully I can just crash in one more time, fiery confluence my opponent, and call that that before my opponent gets to do whatever big dumb thing they're going to do. Okay. A primeval titan. That maybe isn't too bad, actually. That might be beatable. Those are mountains currently. All right, if I attack with everything, my opponent blocks Magus of the Moon, and they take six damage. And then Fire Confluence kills them. Is there anything that beats me? Uh, short of something insane like a Slaughter Pact, I don't think so. All right, six damage to each opponent. All right, um, that was a very fast league. Okay, um, thoughts on the deck? I really like the sideboard plan of just murder your opponent. I, I really do respect that. Um, I think this is a deck that kind of has polarized matchups. There's some things that we're going to have a lot of trouble fighting against. Show and tell, for example, is one of them. So we're really hoping to aggro our opponents down before anything else. Given the kill speed of this deck, I don't think I'm overly worried about Uro. I think that's totally fine. Um... I think, in theory, we have trouble with Stoneforge Mystic decks, but I don't know that our opponent, um, our Stoneblade opponent, played very optimally. They did things like a turn one main phase brainstorm that made me think that they were maybe um, newer to either that matchup or the deck. Um, but overall, I, I like this, and I trust Basuda's reps with this. Uh, the deck list feels good. I don't have anything much to say. All right, folks, if you made it this far and you haven't already, please throw me a like on the video. That sort of thing means a lot, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day. See ya.